Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the food experience. Today's experience, I received this Kumuster air fryer oven for the purpose of review, and I've been testing it out for a little bit over a month now. I could go over all the specs, but it's not really necessary. I will provide a link in the description down below where you can get it off of Amazon, and it will have all the specifications there. It does go up to 450 degrees and has all these different modes. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the Kumuster air fryer oven. And here we go. After unpacking the box, this is what you will receive. A bake tray, air fryer basket, crumb and drip tray, wire rack, rotisserie retrieval tool, instruction manual, oven gloves, and inside I see a rotisserie spit and forks. First thing, remove the tape. After that, the door will open. And it's nice because it stays open here, here, and all the way down. So it's like three different positions. And as I mentioned, inside is the rotisserie rod or spit, whatever you want to call it, in addition to two rotisserie forks. Unscrew them and they slide right off. And these only have two forks, unlike some of them that have three. They're also a little bit lightweight. They're not as heavy as some of the others, but it looks like they'll get the job done just fine. Here's a look at the back side of the air fryer oven. There's ventilation on both sides, and there's also an exhaust outtake that's covered by metal right here, but it looks like there's an exhaust out here. There's also two plastic pegs to prevent you going against a wall. Even then, I would put it out further away from the wall than these pegs. And make sure not to put this under a cabinet. There are also ventilation holes on the top and the sides. Here's a look at the cord that comes with it. It utilizes a two-prong power connector. One of the ends is polarized, so it's a little bit wider. And the cord is 41 inches in length from the back of the oven to the end of the prongs. The device is just short of 16 inches in width, about 13 and a half inches in height, and the depth of the oven is just over a foot from front to the very back, not counting the standoffs. First thing you wanna do is wash the crumb drip tray with soapy water, and then insert it into the bottom of the oven, and I believe it slides all the way back. I'm not 100% sure, because there definitely is some extra room. Also to note, there are two heating elements on the bottom, and there are four heating elements on the top in addition to a large air fryer fan. On the sides is where the rotisserie rod goes. There's a motor on this side and a stationary part on that side that has a little hook that the rod drops into. To turn on the Kumuster air fryer oven, press the red power button once. It defaults to fry mode, shows a picture of french fries, Default temperature is 400 degrees and 15 minutes for the time. In this mode, you can only go up to 400 degrees. If you want to adjust the temperature, press this button right here that's not illuminated. It'll go to the temperature and you could lower it. It goes five degrees at a time and you could go down to 120 degrees. To change the time, press this button again and it goes in minutes, you could decrease or increase. Only goes up to 45 minutes and goes down to one minute. To start the operation, press the play pause button. Right now it's preheating. You'll notice the time is blinking. When it's up to temperature, it will give you an audible beep and then it will start counting down. There we go, preheat is complete and it's now counting down. I started at one minute, so there you go. If you want to pause the cycle, press the play pause button. The interior light will turn on. Time is stopped. You could now adjust your food, whatever, close it back up and press play pause again for it to resume. To stop the cycle altogether, press the power button once and the cycle is stopped. To turn off the device, press the power button again and it turns off. Next one over is bagel. Defaults to four slices and four for the doneness. If you want to alter that, you can use the plus and minus buttons and set how dark you would like it. It goes up to six and goes down to one. If you want to change the amount of slices, press this button. And now you could change it less 
or more all the way up to six slices. Next over from that is bake. Defaults to 350 degrees, 30 minutes. And if you want to change the timer temperature, use this button again. And it goes all the way up to 450 in this mode. And as far as the time is concerned, it goes all the way to two hours. Next over is roast. I also forgot to mention there's an air fry fan button right here. It looks like a fan. And you could leave it off or on. That turns on and off the air fryer fan. It's available in most of the operations, but not all of them. Also in this mode is a rotisserie button. You could press it and you'll notice the rotisserie light up. That's how you turn on and off the ability for it to turn the food. Next over you have reheat. Then going to the bottom, there's toast, pizza. Now if you notice with pizza, the air fry fan is on. I would not leave it on in pizza mode. I would absolutely turn it off because in air fry mode, if the fan is blowing down, it's going to brown the cheese much quicker than the rest of the pizza is going to be finished. So definitely turn that off. Next over is broil, then dehydrate. And in dehydrate mode, you could go as low as 100 degrees and up to 175. If you notice the hours, it starts at six hours and you could certainly go a lot higher than that all the way up to 72 hours. Next over is warm and of course it has its temperature range goes down to 140 and up to 200 and of course the time is going to be different goes up to two hours. So each one of these functions is a little bit unique. What I really wish is that they had a custom function one that didn't have any specific function where you could set upper heating elements, lower heating elements, the time up to 72 hours, the temperature, the full range that it supports, and whether you want the air fry fan on or off and the rotisserie on and off. That would be awesome. A little custom button. Also, there is an interior light button. Press it to turn on. Press it again to turn off. And really, that's about all you need to know about the Kumusker air fryer oven operation. Time for some sample cooks. Turning on the Koo Muster, I will leave it in the regular fry mode, adjusting the temperature down to 350 and upping the time quite a bit. Really doesn't matter. I will be cooking by temperature and not by time anyways. 45 is more than enough. Start her up. I have the chicken in the air fryer basket. Putting it into the regular air fry slot and letting it go. Meanwhile, using meter, going to poultry, chicken, breast, leave it at 167 and hit start cook, and away it goes. Internal temperature of the chicken right now is 45 degrees, target is 167. Just to let you know, a quick update, I flipped the chicken over, letting it get down to the point where there are 10 minutes remaining, then I'll base barbecue sauce on it, Right now it shows 15 minutes remaining, internal temp is at 103. All right folks, there are 10 minutes remaining, internal temperature is 122. Pulling the chicken for a moment and basting on some barbecue sauce. Now that's the bottom side which was last cooking up. Turn it back over and baste the top side. Putting it back into the coup muster. Pausing it for a quick moment, changing the temperature to 380, and let it go. Internal temp is now 131, and I bet this is going to turn out so good. Also, when I removed it, it actually went up in time, stalled a little bit because of the loss of temperature. So now there are 10 minutes remaining, and it's been going for a few minutes since I basted the sauce on. However, I want to baste on a second layer. Back in it goes. Definitely did not keep it out as long this time. Alright folks, time to remove it from the heat. While the chicken is resting, putting in some french fries. Pausing. Go to the temperature, reduce to 360. That's what's best for french fries. Start it back up. And it won't quite even be this 14 minutes that you see. It'll be less than that. French fries look like they're done. 
chicken should be done resting. Oh my, that looks good. Time to pull the probe and plate it up. That's going to be a heck of a fine dinner. Pizza time. Let's turn on the Coup Muster. It has a pizza setting, but unfortunately, when I go to the temperature, it only goes up to 400. Or I can't go any higher. And the pizza crust I got needs to be baked at 450. So, I'll go to the bake, change the temperature to 450, and then the time I'll reduce to 20, even though that's more than enough. Really doesn't matter. And the fan, air fry fan, should never be on when making pizza, so I'll turn that off. Hitting the play button, and the preheat begins. While it is preheating, let's prepare the pizza. For the sauce, I thought I would try this Rayo's homemade pizza sauce. That should be pretty good. Time to top it with some fresh cut mozzarella cheese. I use whole milk mozzarella, not the skim stuff, not, it, not the stuff that's already shredded in the bag. Don't settle for less, folks. Make sure to get whole milk fresh mozzarella. You will thank me later. That's what a lot of people's um, home pizzas are missing, is that authentic cheese taste. Inserting the pizza directly onto the rack. And it's a 12 inch pizza, which will like barely fit in this oven. It even hangs off the wire grill a little bit. But the door does close. Cooking instructions say it could be up to 10 minutes. So at this time, I'll reduce to 11 minutes. How about that? And press play and let it continue. There's about four minutes remaining, and at this point, I want to turn the crust around. And let it continue. Two minutes are remaining, but I am fairly certain it is done. Removing it from the Coup Muster. That's what I'm looking at. Looks pretty decent. Time to cut the pizza. That looks pretty good. See how the bottom has got some nice browning? Looks like a success to me. Time to preheat the oven. I'm using the Kumuster air fryer. I think I'll go to bake mode. Should be 350. Upping the time a lot higher. I still have to prepare the graham cracker crust. So I'll just set it at two hours for right now and it'll give a good preheat while I'm making the crust. Also the air fryer fan is on. I'm turning that off. It really should not be on when you're baking. Hopefully this works out right. Setting the time down at one hour. Starting it up. There's a look at the operation and sample cooks. Let's go back up top and I'll give you my final thoughts. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, that was a look at the Kumuster air fryer oven. I showed you all the functions, how to operate it, showed you some sample cooks that I did with it. And uh, like I said, I received it for the purpose of review, but that doesn't mean I'm going to give it a 100% positive review. I do have some pros and I do have some cons, and I want to be very transparent about it. So, let's go over the cons first. Uh, one of the things it doesn't go up to 450 degrees in all of the cooking modes. I could understand in dehydrate and warm, that kind of thing not going up to 450, but in air fry mode, it should definitely go to 450. And another thing, the pizza function. It doesn't go above 400. Not only that, but it has the air fryer fan on, and anyone that's cooked pizza in an air fryer before knows that the air fryer fan should not be on for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're making a fresh pizza and you have freshly grated cheese, it's going to go flying around everywhere. Number two, if you're doing fresh or a frozen pizza and you have that hot air blasting down on top of the pizza, that cheese is going to brown much quicker than the crust is going to be done. I also think that the depth could be a little bit deeper. 
You saw in my demonstration, when I put a 12 inch pizza in, it slightly hung over the wire rack. If it was just a little bit deeper, it wouldn't do that. It's not really a big deal or anything, but it is something I wanted to mention. Something else I want to mention is the bake pan that comes with it. A uh, couple different things about this. One, this should be smooth. It should not have ridges, because if you're going to try to make cookies or something like that, it's going to be an issue. You could definitely purchase an aftermarket bake tray, but I just think the one that comes with it should have a smooth surface. Additionally, on top of that, the way you have to use this tray is it goes right on top of the wire rack. What they should have done is made this the full width of the oven and had it slide into one of the rack positions because then it's going to be a lot bigger and you don't have to have the wire rack in at the same time. Another thing, the oven gloves that come with the product. If you're going to go over 300 degrees, you probably don't want to use these because um, the heat goes right through. It totally does. So uh, just something to mention. Most people have their own gloves. But again, I wanted to mention it just in case you're hoping and excited to receive these gloves and make them your permanent oven gloves that they are not. Another thing I noticed when you're preheating the oven, the lower heating elements activate. No matter which function you choose, they activate. And that's kind of odd because normally the heating elements correspond to whatever function you're using. And in the manual, it tells you for each function which set of elements are going to be used. And no matter what, those lower heating elements are always on. Even if I'm air frying something in air fry mode where it's only supposed to use the upper elements, even after the preheat, I still see those lower heat heating elements uh, going on. So hopefully they'll address these things that I'm mentioning in the next release of the product, but they are worthwhile things that I think you guys should know about. So that's really it with the cons. Let's go over the pros. I like that it's very easy to operate. I like the soft touch buttons. Um, it's easy to change the temperature and time on the fly. Uh, you could just use the pause button. And I like the pause button because it literally stops the counter. And even if the door is open or closed, either way, the counter will stop when you hit that pause button. Also, the preheat. I love the preheat function because it doesn't take away from whatever cooking time you have set. It preserves the cooking time, preheats the oven, and only starts counting down once the preheat is complete. Fantastic job on that. Also, I want to mention everything that I have cooked in it so far has come out great. It definitely meets and exceeds my expectations. The dehydrator and rotisserie functions are nice, although I have not tested them yet. So I'm not sure which way it's going to go, but um, I only had so much time to test so many things. But I will come back and do a follow up regarding the rotisserie and dehydrate features. Also, another something to note, this is neither a pro nor a con. Um, it's just one of those like suggestions to the company. They need to put a custom button. In fact, all of the air fryer companies need to have a custom button on their air fryers. None of them do it. I mean, I've tried like four or five different brands and they're all the same. None of them have a custom button. What I mean by that is where you could set upper elements, lower elements, both sets of elements, air fry fan on off, rotisserie on off, and set the full spectrum of temperatures from 100 degrees all the way up to 450. They need to have a button like that. It would be really good for advanced people that don't really want to use those preset functions. Lastly, is it worth the $159 asking price? I believe it is. Um, it definitely performs properly, works properly. Uh, most people won't even notice some of the things that I noticed. You really got to be using air fryers for a long time and try different brands to kind of get in touch with how things work to even be able to point these out. So for most people, I don't think you'll experience any troubles and it definitely is a fine unit and works really well. So that about sums up my review of the Kumuster Air Fryer Oven. Make sure to look at my description for a link back to Amazon where you could purchase it and find out more information about it. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or I've tried this brand before, please let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. And until next time, have a stellar day. Be excellent. And most of all, remember me. I'm KJ Andio, your food experience host with the most. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time.